my first offer, I didn't even have to apply. How? At the time, I think I sent about almost 10 applications. And what were the responses? There's another trick I, I think I should tell people. Okay. That. So okay, I so. told myself, no, I'm not even going to bother myself with any agencies again. How Just, many different trials did you apply to? Or how many almost, different Almost coaches? 20. I was getting too many. We yeah, I'm sorry, but we cannot <laughs> help. No, I wasn't interested in I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's still so much. NHS pass written there. Hi guys, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. My name. So um today I flown all the way from Northern Ireland. <laughs> To Basel, then to interview Adusi. Let me just tell you a bit about Adusi. Adusi oh, was yes, my yes. <laughs> Adusi was my nursing association president back in KNUST in Ghana. He's not a small person. He's huge. I'm privileged. I'm privileged <laughs> to have him on my channel. And today he's going to talk about something that I know most of you want to know about. Something very important. We'll be talking about applying directly to NHS, especially for those of us who have our countries, our home countries, or the countries where we trained, being on the red list where active recruitment to the UK has been banned. He has been able to apply directly. He, he moved to the UK not so long ago, but he has his pin already. Yeah, he's going to share the tips and then the tricks that he used that got him a job after applying directly. So yeah, stay tuned. And I'll just let him introduce himself and then share a few things about him and then we'll just go straight into the video. Okay. Adesi, welcome to my channel. Thank you, Nana Nano. Thanks I'm for making time. For <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making time for me. Okay. You have a lovely home. Oh. It's very spacious. Really? I can hear my voice echo. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it is. Because there's actually nothing here. <laughs> Why should you say it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell so, us um, something small about your nursing career or your life. Just something very short, like a summary. Okay, so um Kojo Edusi Poku. Um but most people call me Ohineba because um Most um, people call you Edusi. No, Ohineba is the new thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as Nanyam mentioned, um, we trained together in KNUST. We completed in 2016, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, after oh, I did my national service at New ADBAC Government Hospital in Ashanti region in Ghana. And then afterwards, luckily for me, I got a job right after that. Um, so I moved from home, that's in Ejeso, to Tema, Community 4. And I started work with Nabita Hospital. That if you are from Abita Hospital, comment below, okay? <laughs> okay? So that was in, I think, June, yeah, June 2018. So I finished my service in April 2018, and then in May, I got an interview to be um, working in Abita, and then in June, I started officially. Okay, so I work in Abita for, you say, two or three years? So I work in one year at the emergency department, and by the end of the year, that it was in June 2019, I got promotion to the deputy nurse manager role. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Until moving to the UK, I was a deputy nurse manager at Nabita Hospital. Yeah. When exactly did you come to the UK? How many months ago? Okay, so I moved to the UK on the 20th of August, almost four months ago. Yeah. About four months ago. Okay. So far, how's it going? Oh, it's been good. <laughs> like, it's been good. Um, I like new experiences, and so actually, I moved here more for a lot of reasons. I just wanted to have a new experience because um, I was pretty lucky with my nursing career and so it wasn't really so much about any other thing but then I wanted to have new experiences and I thought coming to the UK was one of the best decisions I would make because when I finished school and I think when the postings even came I still chose to stay with the private sector because after all I was employed and I was doing well wherever I was so I didn't want to relocate but then I told myself that if I was living in Abita then I was not going to work in Ghana again so earlier this year in March I think in February, I was there and I was like, no, I think I've been procrastinating this thing for a long time. I want to do it this time around. So it was just one time, like I just decided because Nana has been fighting with me for two years. I said, why are you still in Ghana? She, she just couldn't we need you here in the UK. why I was still in Ghana. And he's a very intelligent guy and I know like he will find fulfillment in his job when he comes to the UK. I personally thought that I think things work with time. 
and um, I really for once did not regret staying that long in Ghana because it gave me a lot of opportunities to get to meet a lot of people and then to build myself in certain areas of my life okay yeah because um, if there was anything I have really appreciated in this nursing career is the fact that I had a managerial opportunity for two years it's really shaped my my way of um, thinking and how I, I approach things because even though I worked as a student leader back in school this was an entirely different thing interviewing people getting them jobs getting oh, people you were literally yes, a, like oh, an employer nice. and then um, during the COVID I was literally the face of um, the nursing department in my hospital because my nurse manager what we call matron was on leave um maternity leave and I was literally, literally the like only the person boss. there wow so the director of nursing and it would look good on your CV Yes, yes, so the director of nursing. What, so people will come for you for reference and all that. Yes, I get that a lot. Even when, while I'm here, I get wow. a lot of people who want me I'm to reference. I'm not surprised. Their, their work. And I can't wait for you to be two years here or one year here and then see what you've been achieve, like what you've been able to achieve in a. Sh- I can't wait. I know that you're not going to stay about drive. The, the inter- do like massive things. I, I, I just can't wait. The interesting thing is, Sanel thinks she's the one who troubled me a lot, but it wasn't. Um, I think in 2019. Um, if anybody follows um, Denta, yeah. yes. So she's the president for Guba. Guba came to Ghana in 2019. It was like I think um, a clinical experience from another country. So some people volunteered to be part. And about six nurses came. Most of them were Ghanaians and one Caribbean and another. Um, I forgot who the other person. Fortunately, they chose my hospital. And then when they came, and then they, the first time we spoke, because we were hosting them, I had to host them as the head of nursing then. And then you were like, young yeah, boy. <laughs> like, I don't know, but first, the very first day, they all liked me. And I remember the, f- the day they were supposed to leave, we had a meeting with our medical director. And one of them, Emma, she said, to show the director, I, we wish you could just take this young man in our bags Aww. back to the UK. And they came in my birthday week. They also had a birthday party for me. Oh, yes, really? It was, it was that night. And wow. Was they spent just a week, but then the, we we built a, a good connection, and then I um, thought, no, I think I I need to need reconsider to. this UK okay, thing. Okay. And when I started the process, I updated some of them on the studies I have reached, and they asked me what offer I got. And I was like, okay, I think it's going to be a band five. They're like, no, you shouldn't come to band five. You should go to a band six or seven. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know you can do it. And I'm like, I I wish I could change things like that, but that's not how it works in the UK. Everybody yeah. starts from band five. But then, oh, you know, I thought it was a decision I had to make at some point in my life because i was just in my third year and i was already a deputy, deputy manager. manager i didn't know what was next in line for me there so i thought no if there was anything i needed to do was to relocate and to come to the uk that's nice so i think i started the process in march and in august i was here so like five months yeah, that's the main thing you're going to talk about yeah you applied directly because at the time you were applying ghana was on the red list yes meaning there's no active recruitment from the ghana to uk meaning you're not going to get any assistance from any agency sure and then it was so easy for you i think yes people keep asking me that they are trying to apply directly but they are not getting the jobs they go on track jobs they apply they've sent so many applications blah 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 not like getting good response what was your secret um, what uh, made you get it if, if we talk about secrets i really don't think it was any secret because okay um i don't know how it happened because right from the start i was even disappointed at some point i was really annoyed so I you thought, also tried a couple and didn't get i didn't get but then i think i i got my my office pretty early like during the first time i applied how so many was, different trials did you apply to or how many almost, different almost 20. you applied to oh um, guys are you listening I so if you've sent three or two <laughs> and you are frustrated forget it like i think it should be 15 yes um what hmm. happened was was in february i decided to start the process so it was in the middle of February, I think we did the 15th, I think it was just after Val's day. So it was either the 15th or the 17th of February. I was like, no, I have to do this. So I just checked my account, I was like, I have some money. Let me just do this out. So I went on British Council website and I booked for the, f- I wanted the most, av- like the, the earliest date. And yeah. that was on 4th of March. So that was like two weeks. I was like, no, I will sit and do this. I want to do this. So I booked for fourth match and my speaking was on the first of March. So I sat for both and then I got my results by the middle of March. Yeah. So I passed yeah, the IELTS. 
and i didn't really know a lot of things even though i was familiar with the process but then i didn't know i had to go through the uh, booking with nmc and all of that i think it had changed because at first you could just go sit the cbt but then at the time i was so i needed to now go um get the clearance for nmc ghana and all of that so by the time i was ready to sit for my cbt it was already may can you come back on the channel today i don't want it to be so long but can you come back through like zoom or youtube live and then share the process from ghana specifically okay the current process okay, okay. I'll right. do that. So um, I think I wrote my CBT on the 16th of May. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was coming for a funeral back home on the 17th. Mm -hmm. So when I, I I was home, I think later in the afternoon, one of my guys, he's um, the one of the guys I'm staying here with, we moved together to the UK. He we wrote on the same day for the CBT too. Mm -hmm. So he told me that he's got his results. I should check. So I was at the funeral and I checked that I had passed. So it was a Friday. So I waited for the Monday to start the, the process for applications. So I applied. I think my first application I sent you through on the 21st or 22nd of May. I was I should say very lucky because before May ended, I had already got an offer. And that was after you applied to the 15th. So the 15th, did, did you apply? My first offer, I didn't even have to apply. How? okay so um, a friend sent me um, a message like um, are you a nurse looking for those things with a contact so i contacted the person he was like yes they are recruiting for care homes in uk i was like well i wasn't really worried about whether it was a care home or nature so i did i wanted to um, come to the uk come to the uk it wasn't because i was desperate but personally i thought the care home was going to be more suitable for me because i had left the clinical area for some time yeah but then the other people were speaking to me like no try the NHS, NHS too so I was not really about one one of the areas any of them that was available I was willing to, to try it so I think on the 26th or something that was when when I, I had to contact the person and the person was like okay they will book me for the next interview interview so apparently they, they thought they had sent me an email they hadn't so it was a Monday morning I was calling to ask him because I got I sent him a message on Saturday then the Sunday I called him so Monday morning he told me that am I ready for the interview and I'm like what interview um I don't even know about it it's like oh he thought they sent me an email I was like no said okay he'll get back to me so he go back to me in like 20 minutes and he said am i available for an interview in an hour wow so you couldn't even like properly no prepare for your interview and i said okay I, I would want to try it so apparently instead of the one hour it was actually 30 minutes okay so i had to just get take ready and sit behind my laptop and then they said they were, they were going to call me on my phone so they, I think they called me on Zoom or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I had my first interview, I think on the, either the 26th or the 27th of May. Then that was it. Wow. So I passed that interview. Mm -hmm. and That was the care home? The care home interview. Okay. And the interviewer really liked me and they was like, they want to go with me. I was also comfortable because at the time, I think I sent about almost 10 applications. And what were the responses? Um, I think as, as of that time, I've not really had any responses yet. Nothing at all? No, because it was too early. Most of them, their dates, you see, most of the applications, until their dates are due, they don't really get back to you. Until their interview dates, dates are, are due, due, they don't but get like, back to you. Like, the deadline, they don't get back to you. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Except, except that I had contacted some um, agencies prior to those applications, and then I was told, they're not recruiting from Ghana, this and this and that. So I told myself, no, I'm not even going to bother myself with any agencies again. Even if somebody tells me these ones are recruiting, I won't even call them. Because then, I was getting too many, yeah, I'm sorry, but you cannot help. No, I wasn't interested in I'm sorry. So I told myself, I'm sure people are doing direct applications. Yes, and yes, it should yes, be working, yes. so I should work. So fortunately for me, when I said applications, there were two colleagues who had just um, finished and they were almost about leaving. So Dexter was one of them and then Jonathan. So Jonathan was supposed to leave the week after and then Dexter had already left. So I was having a conversation with Dexter and he mentioned a part of the application um, called um, person specification. Um, person uh, specification. Yes. Okay. For your uh, NHS track jobs um, application. Guys, listen to this part. So he told me that for each application I needed to check on the job description and okay. then the person specification for that job okay. and then tailor it to suit what uh, they're looking, they looking for i was like okay so i think i had sent two applications before i had those conversations with him but i think i reviewed them because i wanted to be sure i was doing a good a good thing and the interesting thing was there were some applications that i sent even though i knew there was a mistake but i wasn't really bothered because some of them i didn't i didn't think i would like the place in the first place but i wanted to send applications like in, to any so available many. one and because when you apply on track jobs I think on a daily they send you emails of vacancies. Vacancies. Yes, so I wanted to just use that. Yeah, After see. I got my first care home job, so that was a Monday. So the next day they sent me um, documents to fill and 
get back Submit. to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thing about this care home mate, I was supposed to pay some money, like in the charge. But then they charge for what? Just a agency fee. How agency. much is that? Um, it's quite a lot of money. It's like two thousand five hundred. The care home was charging you two thousand five hundred. The agency. It was. It's actually an agency. And they, they were charging you two thousand five hundred. Yes. To apply for your COS. Not just the COS. So it's it's more of they they will assign you to like a legal person to help you with your stay in the UK. A few things like there's a document. That's too expensive. That's unnecessary. Yes. And then there's a part about your flights and other things that they'll pay back. But then they will still charge you for that. But the good the thing about it to them is they don't ask you for any money until you get to the UK. So when you get to the UK, you pay the two thousand. You don't pay upfront too. You pay it in eight months. I think thirteen months, depending on which one you are you are, you are more comfortable with. Okay. So it's like two hundred fifty per month for the period. Okay. And personally, I I thought I thought it was cool. I don't think it's cool. Yeah. Anyway. So I thought it was cool. So uh-huh. I was ready to go with them. Mm-hmm. So when I finished my documents and sent it to them the next day, then that was a Tuesday. The Wednesday, I got an email from the trust. One of the trusts that um I. I've been scared. I think my current trust, yes. I've been scheduled for an interview um, for the first week in Ju- June. That's the first between first and third. So I think that was the ending of May. So I should. I wanted to. I have to book for a slot. Funny enough, for the first time, I didn't know what my internet decided to do with me. Oh I was God. not able to log in. Oh God! And I had called the friend that I applied to the same um, trust with. That he should check his email. I think. There should something there because I just got a mail from them. So he checked and was like, yeah, he's seen it. So before I could find an option of probably going to an internet cafe to go sort it out, he had been able to book for the 1st of June. So when I went, there was the only slot available for the 3rd of June, which was, I think, a Thursday, but I was okay. So I booked for the interview for the 3rd of June. And this is me who has already completed one Yo, interview. Yeah. Asked them to go ahead with the COS. So they, they, was, they were supposed to send me the COS. It delayed. That was when I had to go for this interview. So when I finished the interview with the NHS, I was really confused. I was really confused with that too. Because I thought that when somebody is already issuing a, a COS, another person cannot even start the process. So I took the pain to call my NHS to ask them if that process was correct. And then it's like, yeah, if someone's already going to issue a COS, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. Then I'll get back to them. So I called the care home that they should stop. I wasn't interested in coming with them. So they didn't even apply for the CEOs for you? I don't know if they did, but I told them I wasn't interested anymore because I already got an offer and I liked the new offer. So the direct application, uh-huh. let me go into details. Uh-huh. So let's say you've seen a vacancy somewhere mm-hmm. for a staff nurse, let's say in a frailty unit, in a surgical unit, in a medical unit. You have your experience in another place. But then you are ready for the challenge because I remember after my first offer, within that week I had two additional offers. Wow. Yes. So like the first week of June, I had offers. And then you applied at track jobs. Track jobs, yes. It was just track jobs that I used. Wow. Yes. So why aren't people getting? You see, I what think, do you think? Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned to you earlier that there's I have a friend who is coming in soon. She had a similar problem where she had a, did application. She was not hearing from people. It was almost a month. Because she got her um, IELTS and CBT passed within the same month. He sent her application. She wasn't hearing for any of them. Just when she got a COS from a care home. Then she... She's got three interviews booked. Can you imagine? So it's like Why that. Why is that? You guys don't have to give up and keep yes. applying. If your application is good enough, they will get back to you. This just that sometimes it might take some time. And one of the things that personally didn't really bother me was, I also realized that the deadline for most of the applications were not due. Okay. So you have to take into consideration the, the deadline, deadline for the application because usually the trust is going to contact you after the deadline because that's when they because have that they'll the collate all the applicants and then contact you and probably book based on the CV you've submitted yes. based on that to select you for an interview. Exactly. So look at the deadline for application and consider all those things so that if they've not contacted you yet, you don't have to exactly. worry so much. And then like I just said, look at the job description of each of the jobs jobs, that you are applying for and then um, tailor your words in your CV to to suit suit those ones. Yes. There's another trick I I think I should tell people. Okay. Okay, so when you're going on track jobs to find um, vacancies, one of the things you should look out for is jobs that are closing soon. Talk to them. Like, check that very well. It's two things. Either you go for the ones that are closing soon or the ones that just open. Why? Yes, this is why. When you apply to the ones that are just open, sometimes okay. they call the first people that have applied. Okay. 
Okay. But then if the application has been there for a while, let's say a month, and it's closing today is Sunday, it's closing on Wednesday. Uh-huh. That means if you apply today, there's a chance that you get called by Wednesday or Thursday. Why? Because the, the application has ended. The deadline has ended. And so they're going to call those who are available, those who have applied. Okay. Because the point is usually the job um, advertisement, they will say that they would close the offer as of when they get enough. So when the deadline is almost due, and they have not closed that application it means that they've not got the people they want so then if you apply there's a chance that you'll be called within the same week okay okay but then if it's a new advertisement that's just open for jobs to take that one and there's something you can do on track jobs you you can check for new jobs as in just opened okay Get a week old or something then apply to those ones because usually in the first week when they are getting a good number of people who have applied they'll close they close it and then start their interview but then if it is getting to the end of the deadline and they have still not closed that one it means that if, not if, you, are, if you are lucky and you apply you will get called within that same week okay yes guys you've heard it mm-hmm. and there's another thing um i know most people don't like talking to other people when it has to do with travel <laughs> it's i don't know it's i don't know if it's, it's an african thing, thing. Yeah. yeah but please for your own chance of getting an offer early enough speak to people i don't know if it really is that issue but then i realized that all the trust that called me for an interview where trust that i had colleagues there and had sent me the link of that trust okay and i think that one works because um when i wanted is it their link on track jobs so this is it let me say something like that but then okay for the two of them they sent me their link on track but my current trust the person sent me a, an email to contact as in their international the recruitment team or something team, yes so i contacted them and told them this is what i want and i'm i've done this and that done, done my ielts my cbt and like okay then they sent me a link to apply to oh, okay and it, it wasn't the track jobs link it was in track jobs okay but then you see in that way you've already introduced yourself to them so they know who to call okay for anything because before even i applied to track jobs i had already sent them my cv okay okay so i think that really works so let's say i'm in Barcelona. the nanel is in northern ireland you want a place in northern ireland and you you know somebody in a, in a trust you can tell the person the person can send you a link to apply to because when I also wanted uh, oh, an email to send your CV so to. your CV to because when I wanted the same offer for someone I spoke to my HR and then via the, the same person I've been contacting and then the person sent me a link to stick to, to the person and was the same one that I had used. used yes and so you get to speak to the people in charge directly okay so don't just say I'm going on track jobs and applying so but you can ask friends who are in various in the UK, in the, to yes. speak to their hr even if they, so. they, they can't speak to them they will have um, because usually during the process mm-hmm. if anybody has done a direct application during the process is that international recruitment team that liaises with you okay so there's a, an email they'll send you things through okay so that email is what the person can send to you to contact okay so if you have friends who have done direct application ask them for the emails they sent even if they have not direct emails they were communicating with during their process they have not done direct and they are in their trust they will be able to know who to contact in within their in trust. terms of for international, international recruitment. recruitment and then they can get you that email that and email you can, and can, you can send person. your cv yeah. so that will be more direct direct there's another trick too i think well i think I don't know of other places but the next managers of some trust like the, the awards also recruit directly too oh, okay yes so I, I also spoke to my ward manager concerning this friend and then she gave me another link to apply to yes. wow yeah. so wow. some also have that opportunity to apply directly if the award is really short okay so if you have a friend in a in a, a, a department trust in the department that you also want to work there even if not the same department they can get you on that department. department that has a vacancy and then they would help you out when you are doing your application please pay attention to the requirement they want let's say i'm applying to the mid and south ss trust and i'm applying to um, a medical award or general one award and then they're asking for a certain kind of person you see it is not about i am hard working I, I said that in our life uh, um, instagram live the last time it's not about those abstract things be more specific you see in my cv i had told them what i had done throughout my my career. Sp- my career uh, within my first year where i worked the opportunities mm-hmm. i've got and all of that is there something specific tangible you've done give us an example let's say 
um, you work in a place for a few months, you were made um, the head of the unit, a deputy head, or you were probably an infection prevention coordinator, um, um, okay. the nurse in charge of stocks, something. You are assigned a role. It is important. Put it there. Mm -hmm. That within this period, probably you are organizing seminars, you are leading people to do this. You were probably That's not to say lie, please. Okay. You are, for me, as part of my roles, I was um, a student's preceptor. Okay. So when clinical students come around, I have to orient them, okay. assign them to nurses on the wards okay. as mentors and all of that. So it's something that anybody can relate to. It's okay. This is kind of experience this person has. Okay. Because the point is, you've worked for a year. Definitely, there's something in your world you were in charge with. Something that stands out about you. Okay. There should be something different about you that other people applying might not have said. Okay. But then... So just sell yourself sell really, really well. well. But don't use abstract things that everybody can write. That you are humble. Who is looking for a, hum a humble person? It's not really about <laughs> being humble or um, being hardworking. Nobody can really verify that. Those things. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. But I then... See. The other things you, you can say, your referees can verify that. Yeah, yeah. Because you know that when you apply to, on track jobs, you have to get to at least two references. Mm -hmm. Yes. So all these references can say, oh, this person, when they work with us, uh, this is what they did. It's something you can all say on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And so let's say you are also assigned to, let's say, a stroke unit or let's say an oncology department. That's what you're applying to. Even if you've never worked in that department, read something little about it and see how your current role can best apply there. I understand what you're saying. For me, I applied to one oncology unit. Within the period I was applying, I lost an uncle from cancer and I took care of him in the last days. And I mentioned in there that I felt challenged. For that particular job, job. application, you mentioned that. No, I didn't say, uh, but I, I think when I was applying, there was a place they said, they, they asked me, what um, experience have I had in this? In that. So you so use that one, experience that experience for that, that particular application. Application. That I've not worked in an oncology unit, but I've cared for someone somebody, okay. like okay. this in their last days. Okay. And from that period, it's piqued my interest in oncology. And I'm willing to more experience get more experience that field. than that field. Yes. Okay. It, right, eventually got that. an interview with them. So uh, now it's like you had so many interviews. Like now after that. Yeah, I got I got three interviews. I had to cancel my last interview because wow. then the day I was supposed to go for the interview, my COS came the day before. Okay. For okay. the first interview that Congratulations. I Congratulations. So I was like And he's passed his Oski guy. I actually got my pain last week. Woo! Um I'm just so grateful that Adusi has been able to share all these tips and all these tricks and all this insight. And I hope you've picked one or two from it. And I hope you're going to use them to get your silver job. If you are watching us and then you apply directly and you currently have an offer or you've been granted an interview, comment below. Let us know what you also did that got you a job after applying directly. Yeah. I do see. So thank you so much. Welcome Thanks for coming. And your final words. You could always get an offer. Yeah. Just, just don't be too desperate. Because most of you will probably be working while you are doing your application. Focus on your job. You see, until you get an offer, not even until you get your COS, don't leave your jobs. Be focused on your job. When you get your COS and then they give you a date, then you can now start thinking about moving to the UK. Don't think that I've been applying for um, about two, a lot of trust. Be patient. Can, don't give up. Yes. You will definitely get a call. And then sometimes if you want other opportunity um, offers, you can speak to other people who already know people who can help. Then you can choose one. But then don't just, don't just go for any offer that comes at you just because you are desperate to come to the UK. Yes, definitely some trust that would give you a chance. Okay. It will happen. Amen. Just as it happened to me. Amen. Amen. So thank you guys. Um, thanks for watching. And it's ready to say bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you guys. I've got um